In the second reading, St. Paul says, um, my grace is, Jesus said to St. Paul, my grace is sufficient for you, for power is made perfect in weakness. And St. Paul was content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, constraints for the sake of Christ. For when I am weak, I am strong. When I am weak, I am strong. One of the many paradoxes of the Christian faith, think of the Beatitudes, uh, blessed are the poor, blessed are the persecuted, blessed are those who mourn. You know, many, many different paradoxes in the Christian faith. If you read G.K. Chesterton, I hope you do, one of the best writers of our time. Uh, so much wisdom from him, especially in our current day. The king of paradoxes, G.K. Chesterton, and he was full of Christianity, full of the teachings of Jesus, full of common sense. And uh, so our, our world is paradoxical because everything is focused on the next life. We will have all the, all the things we dream of and much, much more things we can't even dream of in heaven. But in order to get it, we need to be content with uh, difficulties in, in this life. So those who embrace uh, the crosses of this life will have the, the greatest rewards in the next life. So crosses are something to look forward to in this life the saints would teach and would live. And you and I have to be that way. We have to not necessarily look forward to them, but certainly to embrace them, accept them, live with them, offer them to God, not reject them, because they are treasures, you know. Even religious life is considered a, a pearl of great price. And this is what we religious, we constantly look at the pearl of great price of what we have. Because religious life is going to gain for us enormous rewards, enormous rewards for eternal life. And I also always thought of this when I was a, a postulant here in Connecticut. Uh, I was tempted in my first year to leave and go back to the fun that I used to have. And... Uh, and I thought, and I was really, I was ready one night to, to just leave. And, 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 but I was praying the rosary every day. Not my will, but your will be done, God. I was praying the rosary every day. And I was going back and forth, whether to stay or go, and praying to Our Lady. And I actually kind of got convinced that I was to leave. So I prayed, and I was lying down in bed at night, uh, saying, uh, and I was convinced I'm going to leave. And I said to Our Lady, don't, don't, don't let me change my mind now. I'm going back and forth, don't let me change my mind. And then I'm thinking for the next half hour or so, what's the best thing? To stay in this life where I can pray a lot, where I can stay away from a lot of dangers, where I can do so much good for people. For the rest of my life, I'm gonna pray a lot. I'm gonna do a lot of good for a lot of people. I'm gonna stay away from a lot of dangers. And what should I do? And it was crystal clear. The answer was easy. It is better for me to stay in this life. I'm not saying this to any of you, whether you're called or not called for religious, I'm just saying this, what's, what happened to me? And the pearl of great price, religious life is definitely a pearl of great price. And we look at, we look at the beauty and all the benefits, because Jesus said, you who have given up everything, as Peter asked him, we've given up everything, what are we gonna get for it? And Jesus said, you will get husbands and wives and property and children and a hundredfold in this life, a hundredfold in this life, and then reward in the next life. So even though you don't get exactly, precisely, physically these these things in this life, you will get their equivalent and much more in the next life. These are the kinds of things we have to look at. We have to look at our death, which is coming soon. Why live for this world when you're gonna die in 10 years? Why, live for, why, why stake yourself in this world when you're gonna die 
very soon, I'm going to die very soon, we are going to die very soon, let us live for heaven. Let us accept the sacrifices of this life, accept them, embrace them, and live, the, live through them and with them and easily, because Jesus carries our yokes with us. You know, we're carrying our crosses with Jesus, and he gives us joy through it, gives us joy, and we look for the reward, and we look forward to all the rewards of, of heaven. So we have to constantly look at our death and look at eternity to see things in the proper perspective. When I am weak, I am strong. When we are weak, and we are all weak, and we are weak, we are even weaker when we don't trust in God. But when we are weak and we trust in God, we are strong, we can do anything. We really do have to have that kind of strong faith that we have power in weakness because it's the power of God. We trust entirely on Him to give us everything that we need, bring us through everything to help us be successful in everything for God. In the message of the Gospel, Jesus is there in the synagogue in his own country and his own people don't accept him. They don't believe that he's the Messiah because we know him. We've seen him. We grew up with him. We know his, his mother. We know his father. He's just a carpenter. He can't be, you know, we know him. He's like us. He's no better than we are. We lived with him. We played with him. We worked with him. Where did he get all this? Where did he get all this? They were too familiar with him without, without faith, without looking at the signs of his being the Messiah and also his, the signs of his divinity and all the miracles that he was doing for many other people. They sort of saw the signs of his Messiahship but also his divinity. They saw it, should have saw it. Instead, they just looked at the humanity. They looked at and they remembered only the human things that he did with them. They should have looked at his messiahship and his divinity, how he fulfilled the Old Testament prophecies of the Messiah and how he was, the, he is the Son of Man, the Son of God, who he said he was. He is equal to the Father. The Father and I am are one, he said. He was proclaiming his divinity and they should have accepted that. Um, but they were too familiar with him, and this is a thing that we should think about, you know, um, familiarity and reverence for God, familiarity and reverence for God. We need to remember those two things because you should be familiar with, with God, but also be reverent, and you should be reverent towards God, but also familiar. If you're reverent, but not familiar with God, with a loving familiarity, you can lose your faith. You know, I, I think of the, the new mass and the old mass. They're both good. The new, the new mass and the old mass. The old mass uh, um, would kind of stress reverence, you could say. You could say it's stressed reverence and you do all these things. You follow all these procedures and there's all kinds of rubrics and there's all kinds of uh, things that you need to do down to the nth detail. <clears throat> In this, the new mass is more, uh, a little more free, a little more um, liberality, more, uh, more choices, you could say, more simple, definitely more simple. Uh, think of the two, if you know the, if you know the old mass. Uh, and there's the temptation with the old mass of too much, uh, too much, um, focus on all the rubrics, the routine, the, the mechanic, you can get, you can do, follow things so, so meticulously that you're caught up in, what do I have to do? What, how do I need to perform? How do I have to hold something? How do I have to walk? How do I have to do this and that? And you can forget the purpose, the whole purpose is the love of God, reverence to God, loving reverence, loving and where is the loving familiarity? I think it was the loving familiarity that the church is focusing on more today. The loving familiarity, think of uh, 
St. John the Baptist, St. John the Evangelist, resting his head on the chest of Jesus, uh, St. Mary Magdalene embracing the feet of Jesus, uh, St. Therese, she would take a crucifix and she would kiss it all over, and she would give it to her sisters, and her sisters would kiss the feet of Jesus on the crucifix. She said, don't do that, do it like this, and she would kiss it all over the chest and the face and the feet and the legs of Jesus. That's the kind of loving familiarity St. Therese had. She was teaching that to her sisters. You know, maybe that's what the church is teaching us today. You know, we have the new mass, uh, which is a loving familiarity, or should be. If it's lacking in reverence, there's a pitfall there. Loving familiarity can, there's a pit, the pitfall of uh, not being reverent towards God enough. You always have to have a loving reverence and loving familiarity with, with the Mass and with our Christian practice. Uh, these things have to go together. Um, our, our coming into church, our praying, we need to have this loving familiarity with, with, with our Lord in our thoughts. You know, he's, he's not there to scare us. He's a loving Father. But we need to have enough reverence, too, where we are thoughtful of our genuflections, of our signs of the cross, or our kneeling down, perhaps, uh, our sitting up straight if we're going to sit down. You know, we need to have that reverence, a loving reverence, but also a loving familiarity where we'll come close to Jesus. We'll come close, we'll come up to the front seat, perhaps, uh, kneel close to, to, to our Lord physically. Uh, come close to Jesus. He wants to be close to us. He wants to be really close to us, so close that we can even receive him in our mouth in the Eucharist, that close. Jesus is lovingly familiar with us, and he wants us to be the same with him without losing our reverence to God. We must have that reverence, which includes obedience, obedience, doing his will. Don't get so familiar with, oh, he doesn't care. He's you know, he's a pushover, I can do whatever I want, he's, he'll forgive it, he's so loving, he'll just forgive me. So that's not uh, the reverence, that's lacking in the reverence that we need to have with our Lord. So I think that's a kind of a message we can take from the gospel today. Remember to be very close to our Lord, so close that we can tell him all our intimate thoughts and desires and know that he's, he wants to hold us in his arms, in his lap. He wants to be really close to us, but we need to be very reverent to him. Think of Our Lady, the mystics talk about Our Lady feeding Jesus, feeding the child Jesus on her knees, holding him in her arms, and she would have had that invincible faith even though she was changing the diapers of Jesus. She still knew he was God. She never forgot it. And so we too need to never forget that God is here in the church, in the Eucharist, in the tabernacle. God, Almighty God, is here, and he expects a loving familiarity and a loving reverence towards all, us all. Oh.